Oh no. Oh man. <laughs> thanks, thanks, JB. Thanks. Welcome back, you guys. And in just two seasons, undrafted point guard Fred Van Vliet has rose up the ranks in the Raptors rotation. He went from an undrafted nobody to playing on the Raptors D-League team to sitting at the end of the bench. And now in the 2018 season, he has become one of the most important players on the team. Development in the NBA this fast from somebody who's just 5'11", 195 pounds is pretty rare and it's made his journey to the NBA even more interesting. Shout out to everyone who has requested this topic about a month ago and more recently. As always, definitely subscribe if you're a fan of the NBA and basketball as we're on the road to 150,000 subscribers and let's get right into Fred's story. Fred Van Vliet grew up in Rockford, Illinois, which is about two hours away from Chicago, and it's one of the most dangerous cities in America. Last year, it was actually regarded as the most dangerous mid-sized city in America. Unfortunately for Fred, he had to be faced with his city's violence when he was five years old. In 1999, his dad was shot and killed. If you've read anything about Fred Van Vliet from the Raptors organization, you'd know that they talk a lot about his mental toughness and how steady he is as a person. His father's passing and his soon-to-be stepfather shaped him into what we know of him today. Fred is quoted saying, I was five when my biological father was murdered, so from five you understand, boom, that's the life you're in and that's how things can go. Fred's stepfather, Joe Danforth, had a past in the military, was an AAU coach and a police detective. Fred's mom and Joe met at an AAU tournament and they eventually began dating and soon would move in with his two other brothers. When Fred was 10 years old, Danforth would wake him up at 5.30 in the morning for basketball workouts. During those workouts, his stepdad would have Fred play his older brother one-on-one -on -one in a 30-pound vest. Whenever they weren't in school, Fred and his brothers would play basketball most of the day and since he was the youngest, they would often just beat up on him on the court and that toughened him up over time. Fred's stepfather wanted him to be great. He said that his stepdad would tell him, you're not going to sit around and be a bum, you're not going to be average, anyone can be average, you're going to be somebody. And Fred would go on to be great as a high school hooper. In his senior year at Auburn High School in Rockford, he led his team to a 22 game winning streak and their first Final Four appearance since 1975. Fred got offers from Colorado State, Kent State, and others, but he ended up committing to the Wichita State Shockers. In his four years at Wichita State, he was selected as a two-time conference player of the year and they went 91-15 when Van Vliet was a starter. In his senior year, he averaged 12 points, 6 assists, and 2 steals. You might remember him from being a part of that Wichita State team that made it to the Final Four or when they got to the Sweet 16 with Ron Baker. Baker is signed to a two-year deal with the Knicks. Now even though Fred was recognized as a possible draft steal by one website, he was overlooked by every NBA team in the 2016 draft because he's not very tall, doesn't have a huge wingspan, and isn't explosive or athletic like other guards in the draft. The Raptors soon signed Fred as a free agent before the start of the summer league. Dan Tolzman, the Raptors assistant general manager, said that there was something about his toughness and basketball IQ that made him believe Fred could be a successful player one day. And in just two seasons, he's proving that the Raptors front office were correct in their evaluation. In Fred's first year with the Raptors, he was signed on as the fourth string point guard behind Corey Joseph, DeLon Wright, and Kyle Lowry. But today, he is one of the leaders of not just one of the best bench units in the NBA, but the best bench unit in the league. At one point in March, the lineup of Fred Van Vliet, DeLon Wright, CJ Miles, Pascal Siakam, and Jakob Pertl we're outscoring teams by 29.9 points per 100 possessions, which is the best in the NBA. That is a ridiculous number. There's not many teams in the league that have the luxury of sending out a bench lineup that's going to play just as well as their starters, or even better. And Van Vliet doesn't just play in their dominant bench unit. There's been plenty of times during the year that he will play in the final five minutes of a close game next to Lowry and DeRozan. I've talked about this before in a previous video about the Raptors. Fred isn't just spotting up in the corner next to his two all-stars, but he'll be handling the ball or initiating offense while Kyle Lowry is spotting up at the three-point line. That's an incredible amount of trust to put in somebody who didn't play much for the team last year, but he's proved several times that he deserves to be a part of the closing lineup. He's kind of undersized compared to other point guards, but he has a lot of lower body strength, so he's able to play physical on both sides of the court. 
Not to mention he is really intelligent. Kyle Lowry is on record saying, just look at him. He's not that tall. He's not that athletic, but he still gets the job done. That takes skill. That takes knowledge. The Raptors have reduced their dependence on Lowry and DeRozan a bit as shot creators and have handed some of the responsibility onto Fred. Among other things, having Van Vliet create offense or take shots has made them a bit harder to defend. You're not seeing as much DeRozan or Lowry dribble pounding for half of the shot clock. But it wasn't all good for Fred to start the year. If you remember during the first 12 games of the season, he was shooting 30% from the field, made only three of his first 18 three-point shots, and was looking like Michael Carter Williams when he'd attempt a layup. For some NBA players, a shooting slump can ruin them, but with Fred, you never sense that he was struggling with something or he was disappointing about the shooting decline. He's even keeled about everything. Dan Tolzman said that you'd never know if he was in a big shooting slump. He was the exact same guy. Who knows what was going on in his head? He's probably thinking it over and getting up 500 extra shots to get out of it, but he doesn't let anybody know it and he doesn't let it impact the way he approaches the game. Fred never lets stuff get to his head and he relies on his smarts and basketball IQ. He's on record saying, I'm not the most amazing athlete, I understand that, but my character, my IQ, the way I think the game, those are my things. This summer, he is going to be a restricted free agent, which means the Raptors can match whatever offer another team gives him. It is going to be interesting to see what other teams believe Fred Van Vliet's value is on the market. What do you guys think? As of today, do you believe the Raptors will bring him back on a new deal this summer, or will the Raptors let him go? I think they're going to bring him back, but for how much is the question. Fred Van Vliet, a pretty cool story. In just two seasons, he's gone from a D-League nobody to one of the more important players on a team that is looking to make the finals. I appreciate it if you made it to this point of the video. If you enjoyed even one part of it, definitely leave a like as it helps my channel grow. It would mean a lot to me. I have some other NBA story videos on the way, maybe one about Clint Capella. Not sure when I'll get to that, but it's in the works. Wherever you're watching this, I hope you have a great rest of your day or night, and I'll see you guys in my next video.